Hello, and welcome to Excel Church's YouTube channel. Here you'll find Bible-based teachings from Pastor Derek Rains designed to help you excel in God and excel in life. Log on to excelfl.org to learn more about us. And if you feel led to support this ministry, you can do so by clicking the link in the description box below. You can also partner with us via text to give by texting the giving code and the dollar amount of your contribution to 904-201-2022. Now, let's get into the message. So you can follow along with us tonight as we finish talking about this, this thing called wrong expectations. How many people find themselves last week in that service? I know I did. <clears throat> what we're talking about for a subject for a title is the dangers of living with the wrong expectation. Now, I'm married, been married over 22 years, and let me tell you something. I am a professional in my marriage, sometimes living with the wrong expectation. You know, as a husband, sometimes you just swear down that your wife can read your mind. She can just, she just knows what's going on with you, and you got this thing drummed up in your head, how she's going to respond, and you've had a long day, and she's going to come run out the garage and wrap you in her arms and all this kind of stuff, because you've convinced yourself that she knows exactly what happened during your day, and, and you battle this over here, you battle that over there, and, man, you walk in, and it's, it's hey, hey, what's going on? How you doing? And an attitude just kicks in right there. And you go to the back and you keep talking to yourself and, you, and the devil starts talking to you. And he'll tell you, she's just not paying no attention to you. I can't believe she don't know what's going on with you. Oh my gosh, she can't read your mind. Yeah, but she can read my emotions. And you just go on and on and on. And an hour can go by with me. And I'm still in my own house in a wrong expectation, hoping and wishing she would respond to the carnival that's going on in my head. I got the clown, I got the kiss, I got the Ferris wheel, I got everything going on, the, can, the uh, cotton candy, candy apple, I got everything going on up here, and I'm thinking that she hasn't, but, but, but the danger is, it's wrong expectation. She's not going to respond the way you have it in your head. Now, this happens in relationships, this happens on our job, this happens in traffic, this happens in the convenience stores, this happens to us all the time, and what happens is, we, we, we it, it, it's like a, we take our own drug, get high for our own drug, and, 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 and don't realize we're taking our own drug and high for our own drug because the other person does not even know what the heck is happening. So people leave churches because the pastor said something up here. They're back there on the 31st row, and they're out of there. My God, what? <laughs> what did so and so and so go? I, 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 don't, I don't know where they went. W what happened? They came to a church with wrong expectation. One guy told me, please stop talking about your marriage, my God. I think, I think I'm on course with my marriage, and you say something about yours, and oh, I just get rocky roast. And it's like, w what are you talking about? You expect me not to talk about marriage? Because yours is shaky? Wrong expectation. Wrong expectation. And there's a danger when we live with wrong expectations because we, we're going to see here tonight, we, 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 we charge people to read our minds, and they pay a penalty for us violating something they have in their heads. I'm like this, be man enough or woman enough to go to the person and say something versus drumming up a story in your head and living off wrong expectations. Do you hear what I'm saying? Now, I got started in ministry, and I told a story last week. I never, ever hinted that I wanted to be a minister, that I wanted to be an elder, that I wanted to be in leadership. Matter of fact, the closer I got to it, I was saying to myself, I don't want no parts of this. Good God Almighty, I don't want no parts of it. But I told that story because, because I've seen so many people in ministry live or participate in ministry with the wrong expectation of where they have placed themselves in that thing. And then when man lets us down, according to Psalms 118.8, it says don't put no confidence in man. Put it all in God. And God speaks to man to lift us up and to set us down. And that's one thing I understood. I heard my pastor say one time, he said, listen, he said, I never want to be 40,000 feet in the air out of the will of God, trying to be on a jet with pa Pastor Creflo Dollar. If God didn't tell me to get up there, I don't want to be there in Africa, Nigeria, nowhere, unless God wants me there, amen? Now, let's turn to our Bibles in Psalms 118.8. Psalms 118.8. This is something I want you to really live by. 
because a lot of your relationships are suffering because you had wrong expectations in them. Psalms 118.8, verse 8. It is better to put trust in who? In the Lord <coughs> than to put confidence in man. Last week I mentioned, you know, parents have flaws. Parents are imperfect. But let me tell you something. Children are too. <laughs> and parents can live in all this pride, like, you know, this, 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 this. Got all the confidence in their child and, and soon discover, oh, they, they sipping and dipping. They smoke a little weed every now and then. And boy, you discover that thing, you go, my God, I can't believe this. Da, da, da. You got your confidence in your child. Put your confidence in God that God will keep your child that God will cause him to make wise judgments and wise decisions. Other than that, you are going to set yourself up with the wrong expectations. Do we believe the best for our kids? Yes, we do. But I can tell you this, you will be absolutely shocked if you create an environment for them to be honest with you. You'll be stunned. <laughs> because, because, because sometimes, I can remember with Marviante, sometimes I would, something in me would say, you don't want to know the answer to that question. <laughs> You don't want to, just don't even get on that subject because you're gonna, you're, your night is going to be wrecked. I said, okay, I won't touch that then. I don't want, I want to hear that. And, and, and he'd come home from school or whatever it is, and I could just look at him. <laughs> I just look at him. His mama go, oh, I'm so glad he's here. Oh, we, we got your room, we got you this. And I'm just, I'm just looking at him. <laughs> I'm just checking him out. Yeah, you, are you? Oh, go ahead, Dad. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I, I want to know. You, you all right? You, 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 you good to go down there? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And something would say, just go ahead and ask him. I said, man, what kind of party y'all doing down there? What, what y'all, what y'all, what do you do in the room? What, what, do you sit around? Do you? Oh, man, here we go talk about that drinking. Who, who says something about drinking? <laughs> <laughs> who says something about drinking? But I learned a long time ago. This this wise guy with nine plus kids told me, he said, now listen to me now. Never shut down the pipeline of communication with your children. Because they'll begin to tell you a narrative they know you want to hear yeah. instead of being honest. I said, hey man, are you, are you sipping and dipping, whining, dining, dining, dining? He said, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. yeah, I am. I said, okay, well, I said, hey, I said, look, you're grown. God loves you. We love you. Um, we just pray that you continue to make wise decisions. Don't drink and drive since you're going you, you, you're gonna to choose the lowercase wisdom. Don't drink and drive now. Don't be holding no drugs around in your car now. So I said, why would you even tell him that? He's doing it anyway. Yeah. Now he's born again, on, on fire for God, living for God now. But I'm just saying, my expectations were so just into Marviante and into Zaria, da, 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 da. Did I have confidence in my kids? Yes, I did. But I had the wrong expectations that they couldn't be tempted by seeing the way their mom and daddy was. Now, I knew how we would crumble sometimes behind closed doors. I knew how the world would put pressure on us behind closed doors. I knew the thoughts we were having as a couple, a mature Christian couple. God forbid, you think your 20-year-old's not having the same thing, same thoughts? But wrong expectations will cause them to live a false Christian life just to please you. And that's wrong. That's backwards. How should they live? How did I want Marviante to live? I wanted Marviante to live honest before God and honest before me because I was dealing with my wrong expectations. So I created an environment for him to say, hey, yes, I am doing this. Yes, I, I, I'm doing this. I, I do that. Okay, no problem. God still loves you. But you, there's consequences now. You, you, you decide to drive when you drink, there's consequences. You decide to do this and get caught with it, there's consequences. But God still loves you. Why? I didn't want to have a parent-child relationship built off wrong expectations. Training him, tell your dad stuff to make him smile about you instead of being honest with your dad and honest before God. One of the best things you can do as a parent is open up that line of communication and let your kids know, listen, whatever you tell me, this relationship can survive it. As a married couple, whatever you say, this couple, this relationship can survive it. Now, mean that when you say it now. Because honesty is going to come with love right to your front door. Amen? <coughs> Let's keep going here. I want to get somewhere tonight. Boy, it's quiet in the house of God tonight. Man, alive. 
We said last week, many of us break our own hearts. Many of us break our own hearts. We even engineer our own offense by having unrealistic expectations. Many of us break our own hearts and engineer our own offense by having unrealistic expectations. <clears throat> when we was building this church right on the hinges of trying to get in the building, my birthday was coming up. <laughs> and, you know, if you don't want to live in wrong expectations, you got to have proper life perspective on life events. Because I didn't realize, brother, your wife is over here renovating. She's over here doing accounting. She's working with the city and all this kind of stuff. And, and you're trying to wonder why you're not at season 52 on your birthday. My God, we're trying to get in a church. But what happened? I started living off the wrong expectation. I didn't have a proper life perspective on what was happening around me. So I just, I just assumed, hey, ain't nothing happening. Surely you won't miss this. And what happened? I started whining. I started pouting. Why? Because, because I didn't have proper perspective. And when you don't have proper life perspective, you can miss, you can miss, hey, your wife just watched her, her mother. She just took her, her, her dad to the doctor. Now you want her to come home and cook? My God, why didn't you pick up some food if you would have had the right perspective to see her serving her family? But when you don't have that, wrong expectations are going to lead your thoughts and your actions, and you're going to wonder why she's not paying attention to you. Well, guess what? Today, you took the back seat, buddy. And if you had the right life perspective, you would have served me and not expected me to be the normal wife who don't have to take care of kids, take care of dad, take care of mom, and all that kind of stuff. But when we don't have the right perspective on life events, we'll miss it every single time. Now, how many people know what I'm talking about? You can get going in life, and your little anniversary scoop right up on you. And, it's, and, and, and the wife is like, hey, where's the? She's like, man, I've been working 14 hours. I, I, I got the card. I got, the, I, I, I got us a cake. I, 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 we're going to do something on the weekend. I want to do something today. It's my, today is my day. Today is my birthday. And it's like, oh, God, what in the world? It's a fine line we walk. When, 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 when we live in wrong expectation because we continue to assault people who didn't mean any harm to us, who didn't even know that you had a problem with it, we continue to assault them in our minds. And a lot of times, I know for us in our marriage, I just, I just, I just assume this is going to happen this evening. We're going to sit down, we're going to watch this series, we're going to do this and do that. I just assume that. And... Boy, when that thing don't happen, I click on series, uh, season one, series one, and look over there, 20 minutes into it, and she's asleep. <laughs> oh, God. I'm trying to figure out where this thing is going. Does she like spending time with me or not? I'm trying to figure out. Uh, yeah, of course she does. But all day, you had it in your mind, Homeland or whatever that is, you're going to watch it. It's wrong expectation if you haven't verbalized it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? So the dangers of it, I'm, let me just go on a little further. If, if kids are in here, they're supposed to be in children's ministry. This, this, <laughs> the, the, let me just go a little further in the sex category, marital sex. If you're married, you got to stop playing hide and go seek. <laughs> when you know what's up, the sun is going down, it's 8, 9 o'clock. And, 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 and we had a big debate. Some wives, brother, are so smooth in the evening, you just got to catch it. But my expectation is on go. It's, it's, it's ready. And I've got to, sometimes I get to a point where I'm sitting on the couch and I'm looking. Uh-oh, she's got the thing on her head. Oh, boy. <laughs> what, what do I, what, what, uh... Oh, uh, she, she, she come back in. Oh, the, the dishes are clean. Oh, my God. And, boy, they come in in that one outfit, the high water pajama outfit. <laughs> it's high water. That's, brother, 
That's their favorite one, and they are ready to go to sleep, Jack. And let me tell you something. Your, the wrong expectations has been brewing all day, and we hadn't said nothing, hadn't set the tone, hadn't set the atmosphere for nothing. And man, when I see that, that, that thing go in that head, that high water bedroom, and, 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 and go, go back in that bedroom and all the lights are out, it's, it's buddy. <laughs> you, 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 you. You might as well just massage some shoulders tonight. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? But I used to get so furious. I just, I, I, just, I, just, I just can't even believe this. I can't even believe that you're not, you, you don't love me and you don't, you, you, you don't pay any attention to me. She's like, what are you even talking about? No, you, 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 you have had the wrong expectations and you haven't been paying attention to how tired I am. And, and, and what I've been doing, and, man, and, 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 and what it does, it calls you to play this hide and go seek. And I'm like, hey, can you, do you, you, you? and that shoulder's stiff. <laughs> that shoulder's stiff. I'm like, leave it alone now. You're going you're gonna to cause some ruckus up in here. <laughs> that shoulder's stiff on you, and that shoulder's stiff. And you keep going. There's meetings I got tomorrow. There's a call I got tomorrow. I got this going on tomorrow, and I don't want to hear that. But I tell you what, wrong expectations will cause that man to turn his back and argue and fuss and fight and this, this, this. But I, I don't play get back. Chase me and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> ain't going to be no get back. I'll get you tomorrow. Hey, ain't no getting you. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so I'm, I'm not going to play that. But, 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 but what I want to share with you, wrong expectations can cause us to build up walls because the person does not know what's going on in our head. Let me get back up here. <coughs> Let me get back up here. Let's keep going. <coughs> Let's go to uh, Second Kings. Uh, we was there last week. Let's go back uh, Second Kings. Second Kings. Did that hair get threw up in the air? And buddy, you, you you can hang it up. Now, I'm just going to recap the story for you. You know, Naaman um, was a leprous man, and he was believing God for a healing in 2 Kings chapter 5. Uh, <coughs> that entire thing there, we talked about it last week. But Naaman was a man who was diseased, and uh, he just believed that uh, the king had a healing for him. And the king deferred him and said, hey, I, I don't, man, you can't, you're not going to put that expectation on me and I fear you. No way, I'm not going to take God's place. So, hey, there's a prophet, and Elisha, Elisha the prophet, <coughs> uh, was pretty much the man back then. And, and, and Naaman made his way to Elijah's house. And then the, and the, and the word says that Elisha sent somebody to the door, a messenger to the door, to tell Naaman, who had the carnival going on in his head, of how he was going to get healed. Tell him to go jump in the Jordan River. Do it seven times, and he'll be cleansed. And the Bible says that Naaman rent his clothes when he got that instruction. Why would you be believing God for a healing? Get the instruction, and then get mad with the instruction. I'll tell you why. He had the wrong expectation for how he wanted to be healed. And he told Elijah, he said, my God, you could have put me in a beautiful pond or something, but not this dirty thing. Look at it. You, you can't tailor and make your healing. If God wants to heal you, he can heal you with a stranger. He can heal you with a guy in the elevator. He can heal you with your school teacher. He can heal you with a police officer stopping you for a ticket. He can heal you any kind of way. But if you have it in your head, it's got to go this way. And if it does not go this way, I got a problem with it. You're setting yourself up for, for, for the backlash of living with wrong expectations. Amen. Now, I want to show you this tonight. Acts 3. Then I'm going to list out some things to you. Glory to God. Acts 3.
In your notes, I want you to write this down. When we stop expecting people to be perfect, we can like them for who they really are. When we stop expecting for people to be perfect, we can really like them for who they really are. Somebody said, why do you say that? Because in a lot of relationships that we have, if you've had wrong expectations with that relationship, you have probably robbed it of authenticity. And you've trained them not to be authentic. You know, people say stuff like, look, look, all I know is if you got a problem with it, just say it to me. Okay. You, 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 you want to correct me? Just go, ahead and just go ahead and say it. I heard people tell my pastor that and, 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 and his wife and, 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 and some of the same folks wrote him emails and cursed him out from head to toe. What was that? You got wrong expectation on the relationship. You think when you say that, that's going to keep it from coming to you? No, I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you. And what happens? What happens with wrong expectations? They take that thing, the, the relationship loses all of the authenticity. They take that thing, they take that text, you thought you guys were holy of holy. They take that thing and they show it all over their little circle of what you said because it was started with the wrong expectations. And it robs the relationship of authenticity. Acts 3 is going to us, let us in on this thing. <coughs> Woo, glory to God. Somebody say expectancy. That's what we're getting ready to see right here. Acts 3, verse 1. Now, Peter and John went up to, together into the temple <coughs> at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them, or beg, that entered into the temple who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. Hey, give me something, begging. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. Now, before we keep reading, those men of God deflected wrong expectation. The Spirit of God had ministered to them, he's wanting something tangible, here's what you're going to give him, though. The Spirit of God told Peter, and John, listen, this man is begging you for something, and the Spirit of God prompted them, hey, look on us. Don't look at what, don't, do not look at what's in our hands. <clears throat> oh, glory to God. This is how you got to tell your relationships. <laughs> in verse 5, and he gave heed unto them, watch this, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter, watch this now, watch Peter redirect this man. Then Peter said, silver and gold I just don't have. But such as I have, I will give thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Glory to God. So here's a man at the gate or the door of the church or whatever it is. He's there, and everybody that walks by him, they're expecting him to beg for something. You've been there, done that, right? I mean, you're not so saved that you, you see one guy, you see one guy on the end of Walmart with a bucket uh, in the door. You know him to go in uh, before you really got a heart to give and receive. You say, oh, man, he's going to want something. Let me go in this door over here. 
You pull up to the stoplight, the guy holding the sign up, you ain't. You, you. He, he walked by the thing, you just. And, and it's not that you're mean or nothing like that. I mean, you, you could make eye contact if you want to. I, I don't know. But if you're a single lady, you, you just lock your doors or whatever you want to do. I'm not saying just let your window down with a guy walking up to it. But, but you know when you see the sign and when they stand up, okay, you want something. This guy's sitting at the gate, and, 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 <coughs> and Peter and these guys, they're, 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 the Spirit of God has already told them, he normally gets something from folks. I don't want you to give him that, though. He's sitting at the gate with the wrong expectation of what he really needs. Listen to this. <clears throat> wrong expectation based on this story right here can create a belief system that stops the hurt, but it doesn't heal it. Why do I say that? They could have handed that man some money and walked right on in. Could have got him some two-piece chicken dinner or whatever it was. Ain't nothing healed. But see, this man with this wrong expectation sitting at this gate, he's expecting tangible things. And those tangible things for I don't know how long, him sitting there getting them and collecting things, it might have stopped his hurt temporarily. Didn't heal nothing. And Peter said, look, I don't have nothing in my hand to give you. Silver and gold, I don't have. But I got something I can give you, though. And when they gave it to him, the hurt not only stopped, the man was healed. He jumped up, leapt, leapt up, ran in the, in, in the temple, shouting and screaming, this, that, and the other. What happened? When his expectations were changed or challenged, the man was healed. But wrong expectation can create a belief system that just stops the hurt, but it doesn't heal it. See, I could have been expecting wrong to get promote, prom, prom, promoted in ministry, got promoted, not, not, not realizing uh, you're still hurting. You still don't trust men. You still don't trust authority. You're not even healed from it. But since you was expecting wrong, hinting and going on, here you are. And man, when you get in that position, it just don't feel right. You can't take correction. You can't flow. You can't do nothing. Why? Because, because, because the, position, the position didn't heal you. It didn't hear you. I tell you what it did do, though, because you forced your way with wrong expectation. It stopped to hurt a little bit. <clears throat> Number two. Oh gosh. Mm, 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 mm. I gotta say this. <sighs> oh Lord. Wrong expectation. If you're not careful can turn into a get over spirit. It can turn into a get over spirit. <clears throat> and a get over spirit that's living in wrong expectation can sense this may be a ticket for me here. These hearts may be inclined to, to periodically help me out here. Well, this person may be periodically tenderhearted enough for me to get help every, every 30 days from. And if you're not careful, it can turn into a get over spirit. And a get over spirit erodes our faith in God. And we'll sit at the gate and keep begging, won't get healed. Erodes our faith in God. And it can lessen people's faith in us. I'm not saying that we don't fall on hard times. I'm not saying there's times we just got to ask for help. I'm not saying that. There's times we can do that. But I tell you what, you get in a rhythm of wanting what's in man's hand, you will stop hurt, but you won't be healed. You will stop, you will stop, you will, st you will keep the lights on, but you won't, you, you won't keep them on next month. See, wrong expectation can do this to you. And this guy, I, I, I imagine he had trained himself for a while sitting there like wow I mean this is this is the life here and those prophets came by and said no no it's not the life now instead of you begging for something we're gonna we're, we're, we're gonna lay hands on you and you're gonna be able to get it yourself but if a get over spirit or a wrong expectation wants to continue in that thing guess what they won't even receive the healing they won't even receive the healing why they're used 
to this wrong expectation lifestyle, this get over spirit. And what it does, it erodes your faith in God and it lessens people's faith in you. You know, some family members say, oh, here, here they go. Who, who was that? Who else? What happens? This person, if you're not careful, wrong expectation, you can, you can, you can start sniffing out. This is a ticket out right here. Oh, man, I, I can get 300 anytime I want to right here. I can get 200 anytime I want to right here. I can call these people, I can get 50 anytime I want. And it's like, wait a minute now, that's not what it's supposed to be. But wrong expectation will convince the perpetrator of that. And guess what it's doing? It's lessening their faith in God. And what you don't realize is the people on the other end are saying, my gosh, what God are you serving here? Now, we give when God tells us to give, but good gracious alive, what's going on here? What's happening? They became, they're, they're sitting at the gate waiting on you every month now. Whew, let me get back up here. I've seen it happen so many times in ministry. I remember one time my pastor told, put, had, had to tell a couple, stop being their God. That is it. I can't believe you're speaking against my generous heart. I'm not speaking against your generous heart. Every time God wants to do something with them, you're stepping in the way. They're calling you, stop being their God. Stop it. Stop it right now. What was happening? You're lessening their faith in God by stepping in and getting in the way all the time. Well, if they don't lose that Messiah complex, you are not Jesus of Nazareth. <sighs> what was that, number two? Uh, number three, with wrong expectations, people can never live up to the expectation we have for them in our heads. See, that daughter really wants her mother to, 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 to talk to her in a nice way and, 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 and really encourage her. That's all in her head. But until we verbalize it, I say, Mom, when you talk to me, talk to me like this. Dad, when you talk to me, talk to me like this. Otherwise, it's just going to live in your head with wrong expectations that they're going to do it and they're not going to do it. I'm telling you, the number one way to set yourself up for disappointment is to expect something from people and they don't even know you're expecting it from them. People can never live up to the expectation we have for them in our heads. We got to get brave enough to start saying, hey, th this is what I thought we were doing. No, we're not doing it. Okay, cool. Now I'm clear. Now I can move on. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought, uh, Pastor, you, got, you guys going to Orlando uh, f f for a week? Okay, let me, let me get my bags packed. Oh, you're not going. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Oh, all right. I, no, I, I can go ahead and start planning my thing. But, but wrong expectation? You'll wait till the last minute. You ain't going. I say, uh, Went to his, uh, I said, uh, his uh, admin assistant. I said, Tamika, uh, they headed to, uh, where they headed to? Uh, they're going to Texas. He's going to Texas. He's got to preach in Texas. I said, okay, shoot me an email and just give me the details. And, uh, and I kind of, I kind of, I kind of walked. I, I said, okay, now, uh, the days are getting close here. Um, still no, no nothing, no flights, no nothing. And boy, that text came through. Hey, uh, departure time at my house is 4.45 a.m. Uh, you're going to drive, uh, me and Jonas to the uh, airport, and we're going to get out of here, brother, and uh, preach for me Wednesday night, and uh, I'll see you when I get back. Let everybody know I'll be, I'll be back in the saddle Sunday. And I get the text, I go, oh. So I'm the driver to the airport here. 445, I'll be there sharp. I'll be there to pick you guys up and drop you guys off and go on home. Boy, when that thing happened early on in ministry, that thing used to wreck my mind. Because my expectations, oh, you went on the last four. Sure, you're going on the fifth one. And that fifth one, you don't go. What happens? Wrong expectations sets you up every time. And then, and then here come, here, here come Jonas texting on the way home. Uh, 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 we, we, we land at 538. Uh, we land at 538 p.m. flying Delta. So I'll I, I text you uh, to come around with the bags for the bags uh, when we arrive. And boy, if you ain't got your flesh in control, you, 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 you're just difficult now with Jonas. Why? Because you was expecting to be on the thing. <clears throat> number three, num number four, right? When good times or deliverance does come, spiritually crippled people still can't enjoy them for wanting to continue in their limp. This guy's sitting at the gate, 
And if the limp is, if the limp feels good to you, if it feels good just to barter every, every month and, and just kind of borrow every month to get by and get 50 from here and, and 50 from there and, and pawn this and pawn that, I, I, if that feels good to you, you won't even recognize deliverance when it comes to you. When the good times or deliverance do, does come, spiritually crippled people still can't enjoy them for wanting to continue in their limp or dysfunction. Wrong expectation will put you right there at the gate every single day. I'm going to go ahead and take this vacation. I'm not going to pay my mortgage, but I'll tell you what, I know I can get 500 bucks from. Don't put me in your plans. <laughs> Don't put Aunt Sandy in your plans. Amen. Don't put nobody else in your plans if you're going to do that. You, what you're saying is, I want to continue on my lip. But there's, there's conference after conference, book after book, podcast with the podcast that wants to show you how to get that together. But I tell you what, you live in it long enough, yeah. you'll choose the limp. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it's what wrong expectation can do for you. You know, most relationships are there to keep you on track with God, <laughs> to provoke your spirit. You start seeing that relationship as a resource, that's not good. Number five, <clears throat> when we continuously look for or try to get handouts, we can't see that God has given us a way out. This guy sitting at the gate in Acts 3, lame with his hand out. And wrong expectation will keep your hand out. And you may not be begging for this, you may be begging for affection. You may be begging for attention. But at some point, you got to put your confidence in God you got to let God invade your heart and infiltrate your heart with his love. At some point, you got to do that. But I tell you what, if you don't do it, we'll continuously look for and try to get handouts of love when we can't even see that God is trying to give us a way out. You're saying a way out of my marriage? No, a way out of the torment of wanting your spouse to love you the way God loves you. God is constant. Spouses can be like that. That's why we got repentance, rededication. Why? Because they can, they, they can love you, and now they got to repent to God. That's just the nature of a human being. But God is constant. But if you live in wrong expectation in a relationship or in marriage that my wife has no flaws, my husband has no flaws, you're going to be, you're in a fool's paradise. What's going to happen? You're going to place a demand on them? And they slip, they fall, they slip up and say something, or slip up and curse. My God, you are not holy, this, that, and the other. What do you mean I'm not holy? You had the wrong label on me. I am perfectly flawed. It's number six. Oh, boy, this is going to be heavy. Ah. When we live in wrong expectation, we burden man with things that God has promised us. We burden man with things that God has promised us. God promised us, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. Guess what? Man will leave you. Man will forsake you. But if you're not careful, you'll burden man with things that God has promised you. God says, look, I set up and I sat down. God said that, not man. But if you're not careful, you'll burden man with what God has promised you. God says, I'll perfect everything that concerns you. Living in wrong expectation, you'll charge your relationships, perfect everything that concerns me. You can't see that you're hurting me. You can't see that you're saying this wrong. You can't see, hey, 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 hey. I, I, I can read your mind. God said he will perfect those things that concern you. Not me. But if you live in wrong expectation, you'll burn man with things that God promised you. I want my wife to just, 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 just my God. They run around the throne in heaven. Every time they sing God, every time they went around, all they can say is holy, holy, holy. Sweetheart, that's how I want you to see me every single day, 24-7. And she says, you are burdening me with stuff that God promised. Look, I, I, I can't do that. One of the worst things you can do in marriage is, is, is really live in wrong expectation. That 
Your spouse is sinless. They can't fall. They can't miss it. They can't stumble. They can't, they can't, uh, they, 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 they can't slip. They can't, uh, uh, it's, 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 it's just crazy to think that our spouses are Jesus. And it's wrong expectation. And what it creates is this, uh, this religious uh, place, a standard on you that I can't hold myself. And I'm going to hold you to the grindstone. And that's religious. But that's the danger of living in wrong expectations. Where are we at, number seven? <clears throat> wrong expectations can heal you for a moment. But God wants to restore you for a lifetime. God Almighty. There's been times when, boy, I tell you what, I was a minister in my previous ministry, an elder, and my God, I just wanted to, man, just, just, just give me a phone call. Just answer your phone, answer the email, answer a text. Well, I tell you what, I can answer this text. It's for a moment. But I've been told plenty of times, I'm staying out of this. It's you and God. When are you going to grow up spiritually, Derek? I'm not answering it. What did he do? He recentered my expectation. Get your expectations off of a return phone call to heal whatever's going on with you and get your expectations on God to take care of it. But when you live in the flesh, you get mad at a person who didn't return your phone call in the midst of pressure. Think about that. What are you doing? You're burdening a man or a woman was something God told you to do. Cast your cares on me. Not the text. Not your covenant friend. Not your, not your wife. I'm right here, 24-7. Talk to me. But we don't want to do that. But wrong expectation says, nope. I, I'll tell you what it is. It's a deflection of pain. Okay, I'm hurting. I, 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 I tell you what, let them not answer this thing. I'm going to email this church. I am in dire need. And let me not get a phone call. And all of a sudden, you're just redirecting your hurt. So this thing can do something for a moment. But God says, I want to restore you for a lifetime. People who live in wrong expectation will premeditate their phone call and hope the church does not get back with them within one hour. One lady went on and did reviews, leaving church, was leaving church. She went on and did 20 negative reviews back to back. And I said, God dang it, let me listen to the voicemail. <laughs> Everybody telling me this and sending me this, let me hear the voicemail. And I listened to the voicemail. I'm like, lady, you're not even listening to the prompts. We have lives. This is the weekend. These are our store hours. <laughs> We are not Shans. We are not 911. We tell you that. If you got an emergency, call them, all this kind of stuff. But, but, but her expectation when she called the church was, no, you're after church in the park with your two-year-old baby. Teach them how to play golf, whatever it is, or three or whatever you're doing with them. Stop it right now and tend to your whoever you are. You guys don't love God. There's no love in your church. There's no this, 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 this. And you know what I learned to do with stuff like that? What? What? Bless that heart, pray for him, and keep going. Why? Because you have a wrong expectation coming up in this thing. You didn't even listen to the instructions. But I wonder if you do that with Walmart. I wonder if you, I wonder if you call Home Depot at 2 a.m. Wanting to get some batteries. You, 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 and they're not open. You're just going to do a bad review. How you don't do that? But for some reason with the church, you know, leaders ain't supposed to have no life. You're supposed to wreck your entire life just to run to this need at 4 a.m. It's like, no, no, our business hours is this time on these days. Why? Because these are wives and husbands, too. It's got families, too. But, man, she didn't want to hear that. I'm talking just, just, just boom, boom, boom. And I said to myself, bless her, but bad visitor. Bad member. <clears throat> we only want people who will call you. <laughs> well, I wonder what happens if pastors just get together and write a book, like, you know, how people blast them. So I'll tell you what, people really don't know the other side of the story. Let us get together. Let us go ahead and write. Man, good God Almighty. Boy, that'll be something else. 
Where am I at, number eight? Wrong expectations can place pressure, can place pressure on and disturb the peace on our relationships. Wrong expectations can, pl can place pressure on and it can disturb the peace in our, in our relationships. You just, you, you just flat out, you went to the birthday party last year for a person, you just flat out know that you're going to be on the list this year. <laughs> and guess what? The Holy Spirit spoke to them and said, hey, no, no church folks, just immediate family. Uh, immediate family, you know, your immediate family, no, none of that. I want this to be intimate, so on and so forth. N no church folks, none of that kind of stuff. And the Holy Spirit don't spoke to them. And wrong expectations will, will take you as far as is thinking this. Well, why did they tell me that? It's none of your business. It's my birthday. I invited you last year. This year the Holy Spirit says immediate family. That's what he says. But I tell you what, if you got wrong expectations on that relationship, you will have a problem with that, not knowing God is directing that lady to pull her family together on this special day. But wrong expectation placed pressure on a relationship. It disturbs the peace on a relationship. You know, a wife will go, oh, why don't you call him and, and, and see? Why don't you text him? And see, I'm not going to do that. If he, if he wanted to help me, he would text me. It, it don't work like that. <laughs> if I need help, I'm reaching out. I, I, I'm not waiting for people to read my mind. I'm reaching out. I ain't, I'm reaching out. But wrong expectation won't say nothing. Show up at church like this. <laughs> you all right, brother? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Like, what's going on with him? What's going on with her? What's going on with them? What is it? See, this thing going on in your head has been going a long time. And I said it last week, just like people, a lot of people are not from Jacksonville that live here. You know, you, 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 you'll see some friends or family at an event or whatever it is. Girl, you ain't cold. You ain't either. <laughs> when you come, sweetheart, when you come back up here, I'm the one who relocated. When y'all coming out here to see if I'm doing okay? What the heck are y'all talking about? And boy, I'll tell you that, boy, your family will lay into your tail. I can't believe that you're, da, 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 you're dying, da, 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 and you got four wheels, I got four wheels, you got some money, I got money, you got gas stations, I got gas stations. Was the Lord telling you to drive to Florida? But if you got wrong expectation in a relationship, you expect for them to pick up the relationship tab, and you just kind of sit back and get it all. It doesn't work like that. There's got to be an exchange. And this really happens when you move in with somebody. When you move in with somebody, let me tell you, let, 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 let me give you a secret. Because I've done this with my aunt, and she may be watching right now live stream, she's gonna laugh at it or whatever. I've done this with my aunt in Atlanta, coming out of school, moved in, and, 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 and my expectation was, take your time and get your life together. <laughs> take your time and get your life together, Derek. You're a young man, that's the, and, 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 and her and her husband expectation was, no, 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 no. We're bookending this start end date. <laughs> but I ain't know nothing about no start and end date. Yeah. So you just kind of coasting. You got, you got a job yet? Nah, I think I'm going to go out to Lawrenceville Highway and check out the UPS and see what they're doing. This, 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 this. Hey, Derek, uh, I seen on the church bulletin board that they're hiring a sister. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll check it out. Da, da, da. You know, when you get a college degree, you want to be picky. <laughs> it's like, no, you're entry level. You, you have no experience. <laughs> but, man, I tell you what, that wrong expectation, when you... When you're in somebody's house, and, and part of it is the person who's hosting you didn't give you the ground rules up front. And you're two months down the road with that wrong expectation. Ooh now the host is irritated and don't even know why. Why? We don't have no clear lines here. Now, your three daughters, okay, they love their rabbits. Here's the bottom line. Rabbits stay in the cage. You start talking that kind of talk three months into that thing, you got some problems. How, how dare you hurt my kids' feeling? No, we should have talked about this up front. The three rabbits are going to stay in the cage. I don't want them out in the house. They got to stay in the cage. This, it's really just that simple. By the way, I got to get up at 7 a.m. and go to work. Da, da, da. They cannot be playing Barbie dollhouse up to 4 a.m. in the morning. I've got to go to sleep. And here's what happens. 
with wrong expectation, they get offended in the back room. Like I did. <laughs> Not a window or pot back there offended. <laughs> I hear some mumbling in there, I stick, my, stick a cup to the wall. <laughs> They're probably talking about me. <laughs> Wake up the next morning, act like I'm going to work, going, so I ain't got nowhere to go, just get out of the house. <laughs> you ain't going nowhere, you just offended. What was it? I had the wrong expectations. When those lines got clear, she said, hey, by August 1, you, you need to have an apartment, and I'm telling you right now, you need to have it. That when it got clear, expectations changed. But until that changes, man, we damage relationships. And you, and, 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 and I can remember I stand with our dad, my, my dad, when we moved from North Carolina. It, she was like, can I go in the fridge or not, Derek? <laughs> because if he's sitting on the couch, he's just kind of looking. Derek, let me talk to you for a minute. Let, let's let's go outside. And man, in her head, that was like, man, they are talking about me. And she and she came right back in the house. She said, I tell you what, I'm headed back to North Carolina with my mama. Uh, I'll be back when you can get yourself together. And that's just the bottom line. You can take care of me and Marviante. I'll be back. But as of now, I am out of here. And I tell you why, because we just we just moved in. Nobody had no expectations. He's excited to have us back. But my God, he, he got me, her, Marvin. Oh, man, he's on cloud nine. Week one. <laughs> Week two, with wrong expectations, things just begin to get, it gets foggy. You don't know if you can come or go. Can I get the milk? Can I touch the orange juice? Can I, can I turn on the TV? Can I touch the, what, 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 what can I do? But it all started off with wrong expectations. And guess what it did? It put pressure on the relationship. And nobody wanted to say nothing. I was too scared to say, I tell you what, I can, but I needed somewhere to stay. <laughs> He's probably like, I'm trying to give him a little, head, a little hand up here. I don't want to hurt his feelings. So, so we're just two silent men with wrong expectation in the house. <clears throat> What's number nine? <clears throat> Most wrong expectations are unspoken. Think about that now. Most wrong expectations are unspoken. And they crystallize themselves into one's head. Most of wrong expectations, we don't even speak about them. But the, le the, the, the longer they stay there, they crystallize. And you're just so sure now that you're going to be the one that's going to be chosen. It's crystallizing your head. And when that promotion comes forth and your name is not called, guess what? You don't say, God, I just, I missed it right there. You don't say that. You know what you say? They missed it. <laughs> he missed it. She missed it. Miss what? What God told me to do? What God told you to do? But it'll crystallize in your head. It was unspoken. You just, you just, you just, you just, you just, you just drum yourself up, nursing and rehearsing, and it's a wrong expectation. Placing a demand on man when God says, I control everybody's thoughts. And all the wheels of men, I control that. Don't get involved in that. You're going to hurt yourself every single time. Most, uh, <coughs> it's number 10. It's 10, right? Most wrong expectations can start with a desire. Can start with a desire. But if the desire is out of balance, they will spiral into bitterness. Guy was telling me, he said, yeah, um, he said, we, uh, he said, we're doing the global assignment cast and uh, we went to church in Atlanta, Atlanta South, Atlanta North. Uh, I, th I think I left the list last Sunday. Uh, see Chicago, uh, Charlotte. Uh, maybe do two in Chicago, I heard, one in Tennessee. And um, I think we'll go over to Orange Park in the school over there. Da 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 da. He said, man, I, you know, I didn't come away from Atlanta just to sit around and do nothing. You get what I'm saying? So, so I'm, I'm, I'm ready to do whatever is to be done. Chicago, I take on the snow. New York, I take on the snow. North Carolina, I take on the snow. Whatever, man. I'm, j I'm not anchored down to nothing. And when my pastor began to rattle off, 
the pastors that were going to these places and his name didn't get called? It was a Sunday. Wednesday night, I was like, uh, let's make sure we uh, got everything ready for the green one. I said, where's so and so at? Uh, he, he's not here. I said, okay, let me, let me give him a call. I said, I said, I said, hey, man, just, just check. Hey, 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 I, I, can, I can lay out of church now. Come on now, you leave me alone now. I'm, I'm good. I'm good, bro. I said, I said man, <laughs> where's this coming from? Where's this coming from? I'm good, bro. Hey, you ain't got to check on me. I'm good. Tell everybody I'm good. Ain't nobody, ain't, I, I'm asking about you. Everybody ain't asking about you. That's thing asked about you. He don't know. He, he, he focused on the folks. He always told me that. He ain't asking about you. And, and so the thing about I said, should I just call him in a bad time? Let me just hit him up tomorrow. I hit him up tomorrow. I hit him up the next day. I said, hey, man, I was just calling to check on you. He said, man, you know what? One thing I can say about uh, uh, the church of Jacksonville, I just think they're giving people business too much. And all this I said, man, a lie. What in the world is this guy even talking about? What is going on here? What's happening? And when we got down to the nitty gritty, it was he could not believe that he was not one of those pastors of one of those churches. And the funny part is, I could. <laughs> you think proximity and tenure automatically places you in something when men are hearing from God? No way. Brother, you can't, not, you can't lead no church. I know you. No way. Relationship management, you curse people out in a heartbeat. You're not ready to lead multiple races and personalities. You're not ready to do that. I knew that, but because of his tenure and his proximity, it created a wrong expectation that I'm an automatic bid for this. One thing I know about men of God, they're dynamic. And you can think you're in line for it, and God will shift them in a heartbeat. I remember one time, I know I got to get out of here. Got 25 seconds. <laughs> 20. I remember one time I was standing at the, uh, outside the church, and there was, a, there was an entrance uh, on this end uh, to come in. There was one over by the garage to come in, and, and there was one on the back side to come in. And I'm standing there, and, and my pastor pulled up and just shot onto the new entrance. And I ran through the church. I said, God, don't mind it. I ran through the church, and I got there, opened the door. This, this, this. Somebody said, you sound like he was in bondage. No, I was a servant. I didn't want to see him inconvenienced. And he didn't have to tell me that. It was in my heart to do. So I ran and got to the door. Oh, God. Walking, and got him in. He was walking cool. and Just, 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 just kind of cool. And, and, and I got in the green mall, I, I, and, and I said everything. He said, man, you okay? I said, yeah, next time, just, 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 just let me know if you're going to choose a different door. And, and, and I, walked, I took about three seats. He said, there, 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 there. I said, huh? He said, did you just tell me to text you if I choose a different door? I said, yes, yeah, so, so I can make sure uh, I'm there. And I ne I'll never forget it. He looked me right in my eyes and said, listen, I'm dynamic. <laughs> and he just, and then I, and I'm saying to myself, what does that mean? <laughs> Man, you done came up with something new on me here. I ain't heard it. Priest, I ain't heard it. That is, and I, I, I'm not going to say nothing crazy. He said, I'm dynamic. I said, man, where, where is this coming from? He says, listen. He said, you know what that means? I said, what? Sometimes I come in that door, I come in that door. Sometimes I leave at 8, I leave at 8.15. Sometimes I preach 30 minutes, I preach 45 minutes. There, I am dynamic, <laughs> and you cannot cement me down to nothing. So what you got to do is you got to get in the flow with me. I remember walking out of that saying, well, ain't that something right there? <coughs> <laughs> and here come the PPAs, all of them up in a row. Hey, what we need to do, if he's going to choose, I say, save your, save your little lesson. <laughs> save your little innovation, save your little lesson. He said he's dynamic, and we just need to be ready. When he pull up, he may go to this door or that door. I, I don't even know. But all I know is he's dynamic. And, and from that day on, he centered my expectations. And sometimes your spouses are dynamic. And you come home expecting a meal or something like that. <laughs> and there's a note on the counter. Look in the microwave. I got you some Chipotle. And I'm in the bed. 
Guess what? They're dynamic too. But wrong expectations try to rob people of that dynamicness. And they can't change, they can't innovate, they can't call an audible, they can't do this, they can't do that. Why? Because my expectation has cemented you in this lane and you better stay in it. Guess what? Kids don't stay in it, wives don't stay in it, husbands don't stay in it. You got to realize they're dynamic. And we'll pick up next week. <laughs> Let's stand to our feet. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Hallelujah. These little simple series like this, I always like them because they just challenge us. Wow. What a powerful word. Thank you for watching. And please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. You can also follow us on social media. You can connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For more information about our ministry, please visit our website at www.xlfl.org. And be sure to click the notification bell to be notified each time we upload a video to YouTube. Now, go excel in God and go excel in life.